Anna. And I'm Ryan. And this is Juniper. And Nova. <laughs> and that's our bus over there that we live in and travel in part time. When we're not traveling in our bus, we live in a small off grid house in Southern Colorado on five acres where we're slowly building a sustainable farmstead. So today we're just doing a review of the Jackery Explorer 1500 solar generator and the four 100 watt solar saga solar panels just full disclosure this was gifted to us in exchange for today's review and we had previously had the solar saga uh, 500 with two 100 watt briefcase solar panels so this was a pretty big upgrade for us we really like having a little bit more battery storage and a little bit more ability to charge with some extra solar panels. So I'm just going to dive right in with some of the pros and cons that I think come with this system. I think first and foremost, this display screen, like you like it a lot better. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot brighter. Um, you could see it from a lot farther away. And um, when you are charging it, the uh, circle goes around. Um, so you can see it from quite a distance away. I feel like there's a lot more information on the screen as well yeah. than the last one. And we just blended my morning smoothie on here. It only pulled about 200 watts. It can support any device that's up to 1500 watt draw. So, you know, if you need to charge your laptops, a small like car refrigerator, then that's pretty much the extent of things we've done. We do store this underneath sort of where my feet go in the passenger side of the bus, um, which is kind of the perfect location so that we can also charge it while we're driving, which has helped us out a lot since we're not getting a lot of solar from our roof panel while we're traveling in kind of the more um, cloudy states. So we're able to sort of top up our batteries um, with this thing after a long day of driving, which is nice. With these new panels, um, they come with these uh, parallel adapters um, which allows us to plug in four panels at the same time um, which is a nice feature because the last one only allowed up to two panels so the other nice thing about um, this explorer and the other ones all of the jackery explorer series is that you can turn on or off each section so if you want to use one of the usb outlets to charge something you can turn this on um, and turn the others off and vice versa. So it just helps you save a little bit of power because it is always drawing a little bit of power if you have these on and nothing's in them. So these two input slots are where the solar panels plug into. You have a USB-C, uh, normal USB, and a quick charge USB charger outlets here. And then you've got three 110 volt AC plug outlets, which is a really nice upgrade from the previous one. I believe the previous one only had one or two, the 500 that um, I previously had. And then you've also got your DC input here. There are three ways to charge this battery pack. Um, there are two inputs and with the uh, adapters, you can plug up to four panels in there. It comes with an AC charge cord, which you plug into just a normal <coughs> wall outlet. Also a DC charger, which has been useful because we've been charging this on the road. When we do charge this from the car, which is probably the most common way we are charging it, um, the Jackery pamphlet actually claims that it takes 13 hours to get a full charge from the DC car charger, which definitely pans out to be true. I would say it potentially takes a little less time because we're getting a little over 100 watts in while we're charging it from the car and it also on the display screen tells you how much time you have left for a full charge definitely does at least what they claim or better in regards to the car charging it's a little harder to test that with the solar panels because you're pretty much never going to get and this is kind of with all solar panels not just jackery solar panels but you're pretty much never going to get the amount of watts that your panels claim to be so if you have a 100 watt panel, you'll maybe get 80 watts at any given time with like the best sun conditions. So it's really hard to <laughs> kind of test how quickly you can charge um, with the solar panels. Finally, with a wall charger, it claims to charge with six hours. We've actually never fully charged it with a wall charger, but that does seem to pan out from um, the calculations we've done from the amount of time we have charged it into a wall and the percentage that we've gained. So 
As far as how long the charge times that are listed in, in actuality are, those all um, seem to be good, which is nice. In regards to how many like hours and times you can charge like your phone, for example, based on what they say, I mean, I think those are a little hard to go off of because everyone has a different phone with a different draw, same with laptops, but I found that to kind of be true with Goal Zero and any other battery I've used as well since everyone's power load is gonna be a little different. I do love the concept of an all-in-one system. It's just a lot smoother. The lithium battery makes the whole thing a lot lighter. Like I can carry it myself and I am not very strong at all. So I do like the compactness of the new solar panels as well as the USB and the input cord are behind like a water resistant thing, which is nice from the last ones just because they had it on the outside and it would get rain moisture in those plug outlets. We do have about 12 inches uh, in our garage space right now. Um, and these four solar panels, when they're all folded up, only take about six inches and they can slide right into the back and we can put other things like backpacks on top of it, which makes it really nice. Um, just because we, we usually need all 400 watts of solar. So I will say one of the cons is kind of how bulky this handle is here. I, I do kind of prefer the Goal Zero. So I have had Goal Zero and Jackery um, kind of all-in-one battery setups before and the Goal Zero sort of does a nicer job with making it a little bit more compact. They're actually usually bigger but the handle kind of plops down into the battery itself, whereas this one is very bulky, which kind of makes it easier to carry, but then takes up more space when you're storing it. So it's kind of a personal preference thing and how much space you have. They do tell us not to get them wet, and that is the only qualm that I do have with these panels. Um, I think panels should be able to be left out in the rain or something, just because it's an annoyance to have to take them up and down every time you want to use them. Um, the solar panel on our bus says it can withstand hail and we've been in hail storms um, going down the highway and really nothing has destroyed the panel on top of our van and I, I just think that these should be more of a weatherproof system if you're going to be using them in the outdoors. So this solar system does come with a flashlight on the side. Um, I really don't like this feature. Um, I just think it's a way to accidentally hit it and waste power. Yes, it gives you light in an emergency, but no one's really going to be holding this as a flashlight. It, I think it's too bulky to be some sort of ambient light. So the, f the flashlight feature is something that I'm not really a fan of. If they made something with like a removable flashlight, then I could get on board, but just having this little light on the side doesn't do anything really. Yeah, I guess the final thing I would say is, um, in general, I feel like the Jackery solar panel kind of briefcase style um, panels that they have um, are just more compact in general. I've had Goal Zero ones in the past. I don't know if Goal Zero makes them now, but um, they're like the hard um, cases. And so they take up more room, they're heavier. These are definitely lighter, more compact. Um, which is just a nice sa space saving uh, mechanism. And then additionally, having the extra panels is nice because you can point them all in different directions. So if one spot's getting a little bit more sun than the other, um, which is especially nice when you're camped somewhere like this and sun is really spotty and coming through different spots and the rooftop solar panel on our bus isn't getting a ton of charge because it's stationary. Um, it's really nice to be able to pull out these solar panels just to give us a little bit of a boost. So overall, I would recommend this Jackery setup. Um, depending on your needs and the space you have in whatever capacity you're trying to use it. So um, if you have the space in your camper van, trailer, house, um, whatever it is for this thing, I do recommend it. It is a nice um, like solar electric generator backup system for if your power goes out or just to supplement your power in general. I personally wouldn't use this as my main source of power um, in a camper. Well, I think that about sums it up. So hopefully we answered some of your questions you might have had about this system. 
and hopefully this helped you make a better decision whether you wanted to get one for yourself or if this will be good for your needs. If you do want to see more van life, off-grid living, or adventure videos, please do click that subscribe button and the thumbs up if you liked it or found this helpful. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.